Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In previous lessons, we've looked at parts of the .NET Framework class library uh, to perform a number of different operations like file and directory access, string and date manipulation, working with collections of data, and so on. Now, years ago, in an attempt to make the Visual Basic programming experience more accessible to absolute beginners, Microsoft decided to provide shortcuts to some very popular uh, .NET Framework class library classes. Uh, admittedly, the framework class library is so huge that it can be difficult to find exactly what you're looking for without spending a lot of time just perusing through the namespaces just so that you can get a little clue or a hint as to which classes you need in order to do something fairly basic like look at information about a user's computer, read or write from the file system, get a list of directories, things of that nature. Uh, and so, in order to unlock the most powerful functionality related to common tasks, uh, like the ones we just noted, files, directories, managing settings for a given application, getting information about the user's computer, the My Namespace was born. Again, the My Namespace is unique to Visual Basic and it provides a shortcut to the commonly used classes in the .NET Framework class library. So in this video, what I want to do is show how they make it easier to find some common classes. I'm only going to demonstrate just the use of a few of the classes in the My Namespace. But as we type in the code, you're going to be able to see the IntelliSense pop up. It'll show us a list of all the classes at that highest level in the My Namespace. And from there, you can kind of infer the kinds of things that you can do using the My Namespace. So Let's get started. You can see that I've already set up and created a project by the name of my namespace. In our submain, I already wrote a line, console.readline, just to stop the execution of the application. And so probably the, the quickest, easiest way to demonstrate the power is just to go my and period. Now, a couple of things. First of all, the my namespace comes for free. We don't have to include it at the top of our file. We don't have to do anything special. It's part of this project template whenever we create a new Visual Basic project. Then secondly, you can see a list of all of the classes that are available at this level. In our case, we're going to work, first of all, with this computer class. So my.computer.name, and we can just grab off the name of the computer. Uh, I might also want to do uh, something as simple as finding how much memory, so my dot computer dot info dot available physical memory and we'll just do a two string on it here to find out how much RAM is left uh, for use by my application. So the top line indicates the name of this computer which is just a bunch of gobbledygook because I didn't take the time to rename this uh, particular instance uh, this comp uh, computer and then the second line is the number of bytes that are available uh, to the application. Cool. Here again this might be well worth your time to just do what I've done here and go my.computer. and then start looking at the kinds of things you can get at. You can get at network settings, mouse, keyboard, um, information about the computer itself. We can get to the file system. In fact, let's work with that, the file system. Notice inside of that we can do things like um, creating and deleting directories, creating and deleting files, copying files, getting a list of directories and the, what is the current directory, list of the drives, find out whether a file or a directory exists. How about we use find in files, just as a little example here, to find uh, some text in the files on my hard drive. So I'm going to first of all give this a directory called test and I'll show you the setup for this in just a moment. I have a folder called test on my C drive that has a couple of uh, notepad files that I created that just have famous quotes that people have said over the years. And I'm going to look for the word good, which is a word I happen to know is in some of those quotes. And then we want to tell it whether we should ignore the case. We'll ignore the case. So it could be capital G good or lowercase g good. Uh, and then a file search option. Do you want to search all the subdirectories or just search at this top level, the C colon slash test? We'll just do that one. All right, so, in fact, I did this a little bit incorrectly here. Let me delete the console.writeline part. Instead, what we're going to do is just get a list of directories. 
So dim directories equals my.computer.filesystem.findandfiles. If we hover our mouse cursor over find and files, you can see that it returns a read-only collection of strings that represent the names of files containing the specified text. Good. All right. And so we're going to get a, a list of strings, which means we can for each through that list. So for each file in directories, we'll just print that out to a console window. File. All right. So now let's see what we get. In fact, let's comment out these lines of code and run it. All right. And so you can see that there were three files that came up with the word good in it. Let's take a look at my hard drive and I'll make this folder with these files available to you. And you should copy this to a directory. You can put it either in your C directory or someplace else. Just make sure then that you get the reference to that directory correct if you're trying to follow along. Inside of that, there are three text files uh, with a quote, historical quote. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. Here's just a generic quote, it's better to be lucky than good. And then finally, best is the enemy of good. I think that's a Voltaire quote. Okay. So here again, the my namespace, my.computer.filesystem gives us access to a bunch of different features uh, uh, regarding the file system of the current computer where this application is executing. Similarly, let's do this. Let's comment all of this out. And then let's use that file system again. So in this time, what we're going to do is my.computer dot file system dot copy directory will give it the original source directory so c colon slash test and then we're going to give it a, uh, a destination directory so let's just copy it into another directory called test2 so we'll make the duplicate of that directory and do we want to overwrite sure let's overwrite and there are a couple of different overloads. Uh, I'm not going to really pay any attention to those just now. We'll use this version, this overload of the copy directory uh, method. All right, so let's first of all see the before. Here's a listing of my hard drive with the test folder in it. Let's run the application. We're not going to get any feedback because I just hacked this together. But with any luck, yes, there is a test2 directory now and it has the same three files in it. Great. What else can we do? Well, let's see. Uh, I think we can work with command line arguments for our application. In console applications, like we saw in the Visual Basic compiler in the second video in this series, you can put a series of commands after the executable name, which can get be read into the application and it can change the function of the application based on those arguments that are passed in through the command line. So let's duplicate that in our little example here. So we're going to get a list of arguments. So we'll go my.application.commandLineArgs and that will get a collection containing command line arguments as strings for the current application. Awesome. So then what we'll do is for each argument in arguments now in this case I'm gonna keep it real simple and just print out the arguments that we that the user types in we could use an if-then statement to see if the argument says this then perform this feature of our application if the argument if this argument exists then perform this feature of our application we'll keep it really simple for now so we'll just print them back out then, to test this, what we're going to need to do is right-click on our project and select Properties. On the Debug tab, there's a Command Line Argument section. So what we can do is type in something like Bob and Steve and Chuck. All right. Uh, we could do other neat things as well, like probably C colon slash and, you know, uh, the test dot file1.txt, you know, things you might commonly see uh, in, a, uh, in an example like this. Let's save all this and then run our application. And now you can see that those arguments were split up and displayed back to screen. Okay, so let's try this. Let's get a directory. We're going to go to Visual Studio 2010. 
We'll go to projects. We'll go to my namespace and my namespace. And then we'll get into the bin directory and we'll get into the debug directory. And what we'll do is my namespace slash uh, Bob slash Steve Chuck uh, dash T colon C colon slash uh, whatever. Okay, just to see this application executed the way that a user might execute it. And you can see it in this case just returns back those command line arguments. So uh, we learned two things in this example, how to use the project to set up example command line arguments. Let's go ahead and rip those out for now. And uh, let's comment this out. Pretty neat. All right, so next up, let's go back to the properties window and this time go down to settings. And here what we can do is create a number of application settings. And you can see from the description here, it allows you to store and retrieve property settings and other information for your application dynamically. For example, the application can save a user's color preferences, then retrieve them the next time the program runs. So let's just do this. Let's set some default values. So I'll just create something called a first value. it will be of type string. The scope is on a per user basis as opposed to a per application basis. And here we'll just type in a value like Bob. And then second value, type string, user, and we'll use Steve, all right? So let's save that. Now, how do we access those from within our application? Here again, the my namespace really comes in handy. So let's do a before and after. Console.writeline, and say I wanted to read the value out of the settings. I can just go to my.settings first value. Notice that it's strongly typed. Whatever we created uh, as far as the name of a setting, now we can use that and it looks just like a public property of the settings class. So first value, uh, we'll print that to screen and then we'll also do console.writeline my.settings.second value and it's available as well. So let's go ahead and run this and see that it will retrieve those values from uh, the, the settings in the My Namespace project on our property pages. Great. Now what if I wanted to change those settings? Say, for example, the user does set a color preference or whatever the case might be. Well, we can do this then. My setting, dot settings dot first value equals, let's change it to Brian. And then my dot settings dot second value equals to Chuck. And then we'll go my dot settings dot save to actually make those changes permanent. So we'll run this twice. The first time through, it'll just display what's currently set in our settings. And then it will try to attempt to make the change. If the change was successful, the second time we run the application, it should now display the new values that are saved in there. All right, so as I promised, this is just a small smattering, a small example of everything that's possible within the My Namespace. Again, just shortcuts to get deep inside of the .NET Framework class library so that you don't have to memorize all the long namespaces if you so choose to go that route. Uh, if you're just getting started and you need a quick, easy way to get to the classes required in the .NET Framework class library to perform common tasks, then you can try to use the My Namespace to get you pointed in the right direction. Okay, so that wraps up the fundamental series. I'll reserve my closing comments for the next video. You did a great job. I'll see you in the next video and we'll talk about where to go from here. Thank you.